Now, the land issue remains a hotly debated topic in the country. There are concerns over the pace of transformation, land of transforming land ownership in this country. Well, the National Communal Land Summit looked into this very same issue. So we're going to get the details now in terms of those outcomes from Land Reform Minister, Minister Togo Tidiza. Minister, thank you so much for your time this morning. I mean, there were various insights that were shared during this two-day summit, one of which obviously was around what type of um, participatory action is needed when it comes to the tenure or communal land ownership, citing that some of the laws still are very apartheid-based. And as a result of that, are very discriminatory and very exclusionary to those that that want to be involved in communal land, especially those families that have lived in land for generations and still don't have any ownership of it. Thank you very much, uh, Faith and Koli, for this interview, because I think it's important to give an outcome of what happened in the land summit. As you say, there were various uh, discussions, some of which touched on the state divesting its ownership of uh, communal land, not really ownership, but custodianship such that it belongs to its rightful owners. The second issue related to the need for developing policy and legislation. When that land is transferred, what is the nature and the holding of that uh, land by communities? But also there was a call, as you say, that there's a multiplicity of legislation that some of which are discriminatory and actually puts other tenural systems that operate in our country into a lesser uh, extent. And therefore, there was a call that there must be a tenure policy in South Africa that allows for multiplicity of tenural systems. However, all of those must be of equal status and in line with our constitution when it comes to issues of equality in particular. Minister, for those that feel aggrieved um, where the land matter is concerned, those who feel that the wheel is not turning fast enough, how, how, what timelines can you give that you know, the department and government in general is doing what it can as speedily as it possibly can to ensure that the land matter is no longer a debate? Well, thank you very much, uh, Koli. The land matter in any country will remain being a debate. Because even after a land reform program in any particular country, you will still continue to have land matters that relate to adjustments, that relate to land need for development, land need for residential purposes, because any society grows and at any given time it will require an adjustment. We've got a particular reality in our country of the legacy where a majority of citizens are actually not having ownership of land, nor even having access because of the land disposition policies and legislation of the past, which is what we committed to as government in 1994 when we came up with the land reform uh, policy and programs. Also, our constitution, section 25, actually ensures that all South Africans must have equal access to land and that those whose land tenure is insecure must actually be secured, which is what we were also dealing with this weekend. Indeed, we are continuing and we are committed in making sure that the issue of land inequality in our country is concerned. What communities are also requesting is that the government must speed up its pace of land delivery. Mm. And that's what we have to do. Yeah, you know, you're talking here about speeding up, uh, Minister, but you and I all know and we can appreciate the fact that this has been an ongoing conversation for many years to come. But I wanted to bring the responsibility back into the citizenship because there's always been a debate around once the land has been handed over to communities, what do they do with that land? And some findings will say that there are pockets of society where the land will then be sold. Mm. So they don't necessarily want to use the land for an intergenerational kind of development program or for a farming or agricultural development program. They would rather sell and make sure that they've got liquid cash, right? Are you finding that to still be uh, a persistent uh, ache for government where you're saying, we're working on giving you some kind of land reform processes? I know that in the Eastern Cape, for example, the land that was taken from the Anglican Church was the 20 million rand settlement. The community members have it back, but once they have it back, then what? Do they sell some of them? Do they want to sell some of them? Does that land actually become a useful tool for economic and communal development? 
Well, thank you very much, uh, Faith, for that question. The land reform program of our country, as I indicated, aims to ensure that we deal with land inequality and therefore address the injustices to those who are historically disadvantaged, particularly the majority of our country who are African and black in general. Indeed, when you transfer land to communities, majority of communities do utilize that land productively, but they also require continuous access. In, I mean, not continuous access rather, but continuous training and capacity development and ensure that you handhold those communities in order for them to utilize that land effectively. And we must also appreciate that other communities received land that is under uh, national parks. And I must say that as government working together, particularly as ministries and departments of forestry and fisheries, we've really supported some of those communities to make sure that that land that is under conservation areas do have benefit for those communities, such that those concessions that get entered into with particular people who have got uh, lodges in the park, now the community actually benefits and they can actually have a co-ownership and participation in the work of the national and the provincial parks. Some communities, as you indicate, times get spent into debates amongst themselves about the governance of the land, about the choices of development that they need to take, which sometimes go on and on where most of the time is spent of, on dispute resolution. And these are some of the issues that we're attending to, to try to assist communities to actually appreciate that this is an asset, not only for them today, but for the generations to come. And what is the value of this asset that they've received? And those are issues that, in my view, were also conversed in the summit and looking at how government can support communities to make sure that they utilize those assets in a manner that it benefits them in the world today, but also creating future wealth for their children and their grandchildren. As Minister. you know, some of the legislation like our restitution do allow communities where they might not be choosing to go back to the land because they might not have an affinity of the land anymore and they may be settled where they are, or the land which they lost is now fully developed and they may not be able to acquire it back where they choose financial compensation. Yeah. Minister. We will unfortunately have to leave it there, but thank you very much for just helping us unpack what happened um, at, of course, this particular gathering this weekend. That is the Minister of Land Reform, uh, Minister Togo Didiza.